Welcome to the award-winning Dare to Dream podcast with Debbie Dashner, covering metaphysics, ETs, shamanism, and channeling. Here you will find spiritual inspiration from today's thought leaders, along with cutting-edge insights from our interstellar brothers and sisters and ancient shamanic wisdom. Now, here's a new episode of Dare to Dream with your host, Debbie Dashinger. Hi, and welcome to Dare to Dream. This is Debbie Dashinger. Beautiful people, today I am speaking to Geraldine Orozco, psychotherapist, hypnotherapist, an alien contactee and experiencer. Geraldine talks about interdimensional navigation, human genetic timelines, and advanced healing and activation of human DNA. The Dare to Dream podcast won three Talk Radio Positive Change Awards, won the COV Award for Best Radio and Podcast Show, Welp Magazine, named Dare to Dream, one of the top 20 best podcasts to listen to this year, and it is high ranking under Apple Podcasts in self-improvement. This show is sponsored by Dr. Dane here and Access Consciousness. They do energy work out into the world. You can contact him or go to any of the classes at drdanehere.com. On this YouTube channel, if you're watching us on YouTube, youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger, now available to you is membership. What does that mean for those of you who are already signing up? It is private for members only. That's a place where you and I are going to get together and we'll be doing shamanic work, extraterrestrial work, and sometimes some of the phenomenal guests you see here will be coming on with us to do some live Q&A with you. So you definitely want to sign up to become a member and it's right there on youtube.com slash Debbie Dashinger. I am a media visibility specialist. I help you to write your book. My five-day book writing challenge with all the amazing people who signed up is almost at an end. My goodness, it went so fast. I do teach twice a month in an ongoing book writing group called Visible Visionaries. I've got an independent company that takes books, your book, to a guaranteed international bestselling status. And finally, for a select few, especially spiritual messengers, that's my wheelhouse, if you need publicity work and you've been doing what you do for some time and are good at it, reach out to me. <clears throat> you can email us at support at debbie-shinger.com. Of course, spell my name correctly. It's D-E-B-B-I-D-A-C-H-I-N-G-E-R.com. Support at debbie-shinger.com and ask more about that. Upcoming, I know some of you have been asking and I want to tell you is a trip in December this year. And if you'd like to join us on a seven-day celebrity luxury cruise for an unforgettable journey, exploring the wonders of the Yucatan. It's going to be a galactic origins cruise. And presenters include Jerry Sargent, Sarah Bressman Cosme, Laura Eisenhower, Dr. J.J. Hurtak, who you've heard on the show many times, myself, J.K. Ultra, Debbie Solaris, you've heard on the show, Vivian Chavez, you've heard, of, you've heard all these people, Vivian Chavez, Lori Spagna, Ellen Steinfeld, Neil Gar and more. So it's going to be packed with amazing presentations. Secure your seat on the Galactic Origins Cruise. Please say yes to you. Say yes to a phenomenal adventure with great presentations, plus land excursions to Belize, Honduras, and Mexico, and lots of beautiful days at sea. And hey, there is a discount when you come to the cruise with a friend. So when you get to the registration form, be sure to click on Debbie Dashinger or Dare to Dream podcast. Pod, uh, podcast. Yes, the cabins are going to sell out. They will sell out. So do register now for this all-inclusive workshop and seven-day adventure at sea. Go to galacticoriginscruise.com. That's galacticoriginscruise.com. My guest today, Geraldine Narosco, researches the role of DNA as the currency of the past, present, and future with consciousness as the catalyst. A life-changing contact experience in 2013 resulted in the activation of psychic abilities, and in 2017, she underwent 
several hypnotic regressions with vetted therapists. Regressions uncovered a lifelong history of abduction and participation in human hybridization with 24 hybrid children as the result. Her life is dedicated to the dissemination of knowledge of hybridization programs and the correction of the commonly held dogma of the human genetic timeline, historical record, and human structure. Geraldine is owner of the Bay Area Meditation in San Francisco, which specializes in corporate wellness programs for Silicon Valley tech giants. She facilitates DNA reprogramming sessions and retreats internationally. She's a speaker, radio host, and is writing her new book. Geraldine's story is now part of the 16-time award-winning documentary called Extraordinary, The Seating, is featured on Travel Channel's UFO Witness, Gaia TV's Into the Vortex, and Unidentified with Demi Lovato podcast. You can learn more at her website, which is her name, GeraldineOrosco.com. And with that, I welcome the amazing Geraldine to Dare to Dream. How are you doing? Hello, I'm fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor to be here. With all of that, like, and what a great bio, because it really explains who you are. Do you know what your galactic heritage is? I've always thought it was very interesting. You know, you could get a DNA test, do a swab here. For me, it's kind of like wah wah. But the galactic <laughs> heritage, that's where the juice is. So do you know your lineage? Yes, well, you know, it's interesting. I think at this point, uh, when I had my main contact experience in 2013, and I was taken out of my bedroom consciously and taken on board a craft, um, I was taken to the Pleiades, um, where I was shown myself as being a Pleiadian and as being part of a Pleiadian council, uh, and then introduced to my hybrid children, which were part of a Pleiadian hybridization program. And so, um, as a child, I had this incredible connection to the constellation of the seven sisters. Mm -hmm. I would pray to them. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I would just look up, find them in the sky and pray to them in such a powerful way. Um, but I didn't understand why. That didn't come from my parents. It didn't come from any of the religious backgrounds that we had or I was raised with. Um, but the connection was strong. And so when that experience happened and I realized that the Pleiades, uh, I was taken to Alcyon and I was taken to um, Maya, the planet Maya. Um, I realized that I had a lifelong relationship with the Pleiades that um, I had been interacting with several times throughout my childhood. And it wasn't until that experience that I realized that. However, um, in 2017, when I decided to completely change my life and dedicate myself to this work um, through regression and through massive amounts of downloads, um, I began to understand and, and begin to piece together the question about the genetics, our, our genetics, our interdimensional genetics. Uh, what does it mean? What is the hybridization? How do we participate? Where does free will fit in? How is, does the soul play a role in all of that? And I began to realize through my own personal discovery, but also interviewing hundreds of contactees, mm -hmm. um, that actually we are deeply interconnected in ancestral lineages of interdimensional species, you can say, or lineages of frequencies that we have encoded in our genetic data. And a lot of families are actually linking in the same species for many generations, and they don't realize it until we start interviewing the mom, the grandmother, you know, and, and begin to piece together that they have had experiences with, let's say, the bird beings or the blue beings, you know, or the ant-like beings. Um, and it goes back into their ancestral roots, uh, going back to, let's say, the Hopi Indians, for example, or the Aztecs, or going back to the Incas. Um, so these kind of roots are very interesting, and they kind of correlate with our historical record of, you know, uh, ancient scriptures and also what we've seen about the remains, the architectural structures that are mirrored. Uh, with these constellations and these grids, these energy grids. Um, so it's, it's interesting, but what I'm piecing together essentially is that in our DNA, we really have 
all of these lineages. We are little bits and pieces of all of them. Um, there are stronger uh, ranges of frequencies of these species that emerge to us as we evolve and as we begin to wake up consciousness. Um, so to answer your question in a long way, um, I discovered myself as a Pleiadian, but also discovered many other species that I had been participant and there are hundreds of different lineages that we actually interact with. Um, and I do believe it's very important that we begin to uncover that history through our DNA um, deprogramming limiting belief systems, which allow you to open up into these frequencies, these species frequency information. Um, so, yeah. Oh my goodness. Thank you. That was delicious. <laughs> I want to, there's a lot to uncover there. First of all, the fact that you prayed to the seven sisters, Geraldine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And clearly, you know, you knew on some level, there was a subconscious consciousness, soul level awareness that there was something there until it became abundantly clear. Indeed, you are actually a Pleiadian and it sounds like it was a concurrent life that you uncovered yeah. your children. Yeah. So first of all, how intense was it meeting your children? What was that like? Yes, it was absolutely shocking because um, I had never had illusions or dreams about having children, but I did have reoccurring dreams as a child where from a white light, my mother would walk out of the white light holding the hand of a little blonde girl with giant blue green eyes mm -hmm. and she, she would present the child to me. And at eight years old, I thought, maybe this is my future little sister. And I was thinking maybe my mom will get divorced and get remarried to a <laughs> tall blonde guy. I don't know. Um, or maybe this is my child in the future. But um, these little snippets are kind of marker memories that are very common for contactees that are experiencing the hybridization program. Um, and I was so shocked to figure to discover that. Um, but also um, meeting the children, first of all, just connecting with these incredible species that are a combination of humanoid, but also gray. Uh, you know, I, I was introduced to four children uh, in, 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 in person, and the three of them were more of a combination of humanoid and gray. They had a little bit larger heads, extremely large eyes. The pupils were the eyes of our ocular socket. Um, and just complex pigmentations mm. um, and, you know, more of a frail, light bluish skin. Um, and then there was another child that was about 20 years old that was about a reptilian uh, looking child with scales, greenish uh, reptilian eyes, but beautiful, gentle, um, kind, uh, you know, and they would see right through me completely. I mean, there was no way of hiding my emotions or my feelings, but as soon as I connected and locked eyes with them, immediately all of the memories of having spent time with them previously, memories that I had not remembered came rushing in. And that was, I think the most shocking part of it, trying to place in my rea reality, in my memory, how could I have forgotten, you know, that these children exist? I just couldn't forgive myself or even uh, process that information. And I was ready at that moment to kind of let go of my earth life um, and then dedicate myself to being here. And I was trying to calculate how would it be to leave my family, you know, just these silly thoughts that we have as humans. Um, but there was a, a magnificent imprint that occurred in exchange with these children. Uh, they knew why I was there. They wow. understood why I was there. Uh, more than I did. And they also understood that it was just the one time that we were meeting. It wasn't just that we were going to be interacting again. And that's when I recognized and realized that and felt that, um, you know, I became emotional and wanted to be attached to them, you know, as a human parent. But the maternal instinct that overcomes you, um, not having been a human parent, is just, it's overwhelming, mm -hmm. um, you know. And so, yeah, so I had to kind of recalibrate from that. For, for a bit after that experience. It was very powerful. Oh, I'll bet. I, I can imagine like falling in love with yes. all of these beings that you're connected with. And then as soon as you're connected with them, having to say goodbye so abruptly. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's so interesting because that was my very question. You covered some of that, 
my understanding of hybridization, well, I was going to say the grays are very much behind the hybridization, but of course it's deeper than that, right? Because the Sasani are part human and uh, Zeta Reticuli, the Yael, adorable creatures they are, are part <laughs> human. And how many other species are there that are involved in this program? You know, at this point, uh, Debbie, the way that I look at it is not so much as a species being involved, but rather lineages of frequency. If you could think of DNA as lineages of frequency. Can you explain that? That's fascinating, but I don't fully yeah. understand. Um, imagine that the human, in order for to the recipe for a human requires that certain genes are turned on and some are turned off, right? Just like 80 different genes make the difference between a human and a banana, okay, okay. genetically, right? So in that same way, the recipe between a human and this interdimensional beings, um, you know, we are all cousins, we are all related, we're coming from the same creation soup, you can mm -hmm. say. Um, but what, what it is really is that the form or the identity that they take, a lot of that is actually in what I've noticed humbly um, is through fil filters that are deeply programmed within matrix programming in the way that we translate the manifestation of certain frequencies. So we see beings from the 11th dimension that are, I don't know, uh, Pleiadian or you know Arcturian in this certain form. They present themselves to us in that way and we interact with them in that way. Um, and we, we have that information in our own genetic code. Otherwise, we would not be able to interact with them. Um, so to me, it's, it's more of an inside job. Um, the other part that I notice is that when humans become begin to deprogram more of their matrix earth bound programming and begin to access some of their interdimensional faculties. Uh, and they begin to uh, travel and navigate dream states. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they begin to recover memories of themselves as these interdimensional beings as past lives, future lives within these dimensions. And, um, and the form sometimes is more like a screen memory. It's not really even the form that is being presented in that dream or in that temporary experience. Mm. A lot of times these beings actually are more non-form. Um, they are lights, they are energy, they are pure essence mm. more than they take physical form. Um, and this is, this is kind of the work of the experiencer to begin to remove as many filters as possible in order to cultivate the ability to hold space to see the true form of these beings. Um, the other thing is that fear plays a tremendous role in creating archetypal, uh, holding on to arch archetypal filters, you know. Um, so this is, this is something that's very uh, interesting when it comes to the, the way that these beings look. Wow. Mm -hmm. Powerful. Yeah. So higher dimensional extraterrestrials and DNA reprogramming. And you mentioned higher dimensional extraterrestrials in your work. And it makes me wonder, I thus far, since I became awake and aware to all of this, I have only ever had benevolent extraterrestrial or UFO experiences. And it's really interesting because I just returned from Colorado. I was at a amazing retreat up in the mountains with a very famous shaman, Don Oscar Mira Quezada. And um, what an honor and a pleasure. And I chatted with him about this because as you mentioned, Geraldine, in the beginning, you know, these indigenous people, these shaman, these, they have been having these experiences since the beginning of time. Well, we all have, but yeah. for them, this is like an open conversation. It's the norm. Like, right. it's like saying, you know, pass the oatmeal and oh, by the way, I saw whatever from whatever galaxy today, right? So he also acknowledged the same and said, me too, Debbie, only benevolent ever. Yeah. And he made a little remark, but it was really about where we come from and what we generate. So I wanna ask you about that, the validity of it and how that works. Yes. 
you know, it's kind of a complex topic. And the reason why is because, you know, I have a support group, international support group that I work with contactees from around the world. And I get everything from people that are dealing with my labs, military abductions, military type experiences, um, to Draco reptilian interactions, to Pleiadians, light beings. Okay. Um, so, you know, how do we make sense and how do we integrate these kinds of experiences and, what I am seeing over and over again, that when we reach the roots of conscious programming of each one of these contactees, it is almost as if a formula that when we see that we discover core belief systems in, in living and existing in states of survival and fear, a lot of the kind of experiences that they're going to be having in dream state or out-of-body experiences, interdimensional experiences, um, are going to be more parasitic. Um, as opposed to, you know, if people are clearing themselves, working, you know, coming into focusing on redirecting energy into more co-creative activities, um, the kind of experiences that they're having are more co-creative. Um, everything is an evolution. We, we are constantly cycling through creator states. And the lowest creator state is states of separation, states of um, fear and survival. And the highest states of creation are unity consciousness, you know, and then in between that, there's many levels. And so we're kind of moving up and down. We're really oscillating through these different, um, you know, stages of, of co-creation. And, but what that tells us is that there, we can alchemize every and all experiences into something of creation and that that is the the gift that the human organism has in this three-dimensional plane the law of three of creation um, that we can co-create essentially what we're experiencing and also by understanding the laws of this universe that when the human organism comes into the most zero point possible um, this is actually when they begin to tap into the ability of free will and creation any other state of creation really doesn't quite allow them to enter into manifestation and creation. So um, there's a mechanism to this system. You know, there, there are certain, there's an architecture that we seem to be abiding by. And it's something that is, um, it's, it's uh, reported, uh, reported to by so many different ancient civilizations, ancient texts, scriptures, uh, beings that have reached high levels of enlightenment and awareness. It's the same kind of architectural structure and laws that we keep meeting and, and revisiting. So it's all about frequency and it's about how we cultivate and maintain the frequency that allow us to interact with these beings interdimensionally. Mm -hmm. And so this uh, DNA reprogramming and DNA activation that you talk about, can you describe what kind of process that is, how it functions, what generally the results are with that? Yeah. So basically it comes down to the mechanics of our body, our organism. We are multidimensional organisms. We are biochemical and bioelectrical at the core of our structure. And that's very important to understand because the way that this entire system is, is kind of created, we, we exist in a holographic system. And so if you really understand what that means, there has to be a generator and a projection, right? So you can think of your life experiences as the projection of what you are generating. What are you generating? Well, there's a database of information that is input into that generation uh, of the projection. And that database is your DNA. The DNA is where is stored all of the memories, both collectively of the human race, but also ancestrally. So when a soul incarnates into an ancestral lineage, two things are happening. The ancestral lineage call forth and manifest that essence because it's a vibrational match. What does it mean a vibrational match? All of the choices of all the ancestors that have made have produced an environment, a space for which this organism that is also evolving in its own ways to now uh, complete or to complement or to have opportunities of pulling forward this ancestral lineage forward. And so that is all based on frequency. The human now has some level of a map of life, you can say, a map of potential opportunities that's available to the human. And you 
we, this information is self-organized in the body through the chakra system, which is your endocrine system. The endocrine system organizes through frequencies from lowest to highest. And within this beautiful organization, um, we store the memories based on frequencies. So the more that the human is repeating unconscious, repetitive uh, patterns of survival that are passed down from this ancestral matrix program, um, you know, they just keep reliving dormant states and perpetuating suffering, not only for themselves, but for the collective. So what DNA reprogramming is doing is we are beginning to, first of all, recognize what are those patterns that we are repeating unconsciously. We get to the root cause of them. And how do we get there is through the emotions. Why? Because this beautiful endocrine system of frequency, which is a bioelectrical system, it's emotions that are the charges. They are charges, bioelectrical charges. Every emotion is a bioelectrical charge, which produces a biochemical response. And so that is a deep program that is embedded. We are literally addicted to the programs. We are biochemically structured to behave certain ways. Those programs have to be broken. It's like an addiction that we're breaking and recovering from. And because we don't have a lot of examples of a person that exists in unconditional love and unity consciousness, we literally have to teach ourselves biochemically, bioelectrically, what does it look like to hold in the body this state of existence? So this is what DNA reprogramming is about. And essentially to narrow it down to simple terms, we are learning to love ourselves unconditionally and also see others and all as an extension and a reflection of yourself. Because ultimately we are the projectors that project all life experiences, both in this waking dream state <laughs> and also the dream states that we enter when we leave the body at night. Yeah. So uh, let me know if this is correct. So if I hear you correctly, then Geraldine, are you saying with this work that the way you access the emotions is by finding the repeated trauma? Mm -hmm. And once you are aware of, and the person is aware of what the trauma is, then you can somehow then you guide them to uh, feel the feelings, get the feelings out, experience the feelings. Is that accurate? That's exactly right. Yes. In fact, what is gold is our triggers. If you can simply recognize what is the emotion that you've been feeling over the past 24 hours, the past week, you're going to begin to notice you have some very strong patterns and you're going to realize, wow, I'm feeling upset all the time. Like for the past three years, all I felt was upset, upset, upset every moment. So now you begin to recognize, okay, there's a pattern here. Let's get to the root. When you sit with that emotion, emotions store in the body in layers and also in different parts of the body. And there's, um, you know, Chinese traditional medicine is amazing for those that are interested in that to help us understand how these, the, how this emotional data stores in the organs. Um, and they've mapped it all out. This is how I see it intuitively in the body. When I reference uh, some of these Chinese medicine uh, maps of emotional data, it's exactly the same as we're seeing intuitively in the body. Um, so when we sit with the emotions, you begin to uncover the layers. Those layers are how you programmed and how you experience the emotions into a program in your body. And when you get to the root of that, that's when you can begin to trace back all of the memories that you've stored as a child. Where did you take on those programs and ideas and how they solidified into what we call a personality? Now, personality is really more of a survival mechanism, really, um, that we need to take a look at. We need to revisit, you know, how productive is this personality, is this identity that we hold on to? Um, how, how, how much does it help you flourish and to live a healthy, vitality life? Um, so that's what the deprogramming is about. Wow. I'm having a big aha in this moment. The more you talk, the deeper the aha goes. So... Based on everything you've been sharing, here's what I started putting together. I have had my galactic origins done. Now, I don't know all of them by any means, but I had somebody phenomenal. And so Elohim, the inception of my soul, then Lyra, 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 Lyra. And then um, Antares 
um, Andromeda, Pleiades, and et cetera. So here's what I'm putting together as I listen to you that I'm thinking is really fascinating as a concurrent pattern. Lyra, planet, people, almost all of them decimated by the Dracos. Why? Super trusting, didn't believe anybody when they said, be careful of these beings, they're after your planet. And, and they said, no, no, everything, you know, they're really very nice people. This is my interpretation of the story. Yeah. And of course, right, the Orion Draco Wars uh, it was not a very nice thing. Those who, the Lyrans who made it and got out had to find another planet. They were very much like refugees, right? Finding another place to live. So the way I'm putting it together too is, isn't it fascinating that in this lifetime, my soul would choose to be Jewish, right? It's mm -hmm. not the religion I follow by any means, uh, just because I'm deeply spiritual, but, but those are people who have throughout their inception, moved to a country, felt safe, started to establish themselves, and then been turned against and had to move to another country. I mean, all over this world, right? Till they settled in Israel. And then definitely very um, interesting beginnings for me, very unstable, the family I was born into. And the fourth component, which is kind of fascinating, I, I was born under the sun sign of cancer. What is most important to Cancerians? Home, yeah. loyalty family. Huge, huge right there. So, you know, the, it's mind blowing because it really helps you understand, you know, what are your battles and how do you overcome? What kind of tools do you need to overcome those little core belief systems of, let's say, not feeling safe in a home? And that's really huge. If you begin to support yourself with some of those ideas, you can change a lot of things. And you also, well, here's, here's the difficult part. You begin to realize all the choices that you've made in that state of survival have led you to end up where you are today, you know? And so a lot of people find themselves at an older age, you know, in their, in their mid thirties, forties, beginning to recognize, well, how did I end up here? I married the person out of survival. I got this job out of survival. Uh, you know, we're not living in congruency and, and in a place of authenticity. Um, so, uh, this really is a work of deep self-love and deep authenticity. How do you come into absolute truth? Sometimes truth can be very uh, painful to process because we have to look at parts of us that we don't want to see, you know, and that's where this power of love is the alchemical transmutatory power that we have within our bodies. Um, and it's a very powerful thing because this is how we become co-creators. Mm. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. I'm just, thank you for this. This is massive amounts of awareness right now. Do you have right now still, do you have experiences, conscious experiences with higher dimensional extraterrestrials? Yes, absolutely. All the time. Um, and I mean, the reason why is because we're multidimensional. You can't close the doors once you open them. I mean, you you can uh, ignore them um, and shift your frequency. But um, we need to learn. The whole point of becoming a race of unity consciousness is the ability to understand that you're one, not only with the human race, but with the entire system of orga uh, this organic living uh, beings that we are all part of. Um, and so... Uh, unconditional love and compassion has to be also experienced in these dimensions. And it can be very challenging because, um, you know, sometimes we recover memories of trauma. Sometimes you discover them through emotions that you have. I don't know, you're getting coffee and a bagel and the guy looks at you funny and it triggers this feeling of survival in you. Just simple memory, you begin to uncover back to your reptilian draconian life programs. You know, just it can be things like this. And I do this with my clients every day. Um, we're surprised what we begin to open up. But what happens is that when we begin to look at these lifetimes of suffering that we've had, uh, we begin to recognize the patterns that we're holding within the collective human race. And this really is about healing one, the human race is one organism, and you are like a cell of that organism. And you can either be a parasite in the, in the organism, uh, which is a self-hating, self-restricting uh, being uh, of, of a centrifugal spin in your vortex, or you can be a being of co-creation uh, with a charge 
of a centripetal spin, mm -hmm. which is that new zero point of um, you know unconditional love. So there, there is there is an architecture. There's a harmonious geometry that emerges from the organisms that come into this coherence, and it's those humans that are most in alignment with nature, with the laws of the universe that are living in harmony with with all different organisms, including those aliens, reptilians, draconians, whatever they are, uh, whatever they manifest as. It's it's a harmony. Yeah. So. Are there good and bad Dracos, reptilians, mantis beings, greys, uh, benevolent, also harmful? How would one know the difference about what's presenting? Yeah, so a really good way to begin to observe that. Number one thing we have to do is we have to train our intuition. Your intuition, your intuitive faculties are the hidden key to using the user manual of the human body, which have been suppressed for centuries and centuries on this planet in order to enslave and to control humanity into workers, producers, uh, consumers, um, you know, uh, suffering race of humans um, that are driven by sex uh, and all of the lower senses because they're in survival, okay? So the opposite of that, which is the human that is a co-creator, is a human that is deeply sovereign, is in charge of their emotions, aware of their emotions, um, that can have a regulated nervous system um, in a place of complete authenticity. Um, and this is where we begin to have true vision to be able to discern these different uh, the differences between parasitism and creation and even exchange. Okay, so creation is about co-creating, which means there is an even exchange. This yin and yang is something that is an equal harm harmonious balance that is always mindful of the collective well-being when something is being done or given. When there is a parasite, it is something that we are depleting, we're giving more than we're receiving, or we're receiving more than we're giving. So keep in mind, looking at your experiences, and this is, requires a trained vision, because it's very easy for humanity to fall into the trap of victimization, helplessness, hopelessness. Those are very deep programs that we have to break of separation. To be able to see a traumatic experience, for example, in the draconian program, in a military program, we have to understand how we ended up there. There is no such thing as a victim um, of, of um, uh, complete powerlessness. Our participation in ending up in that, in that uh, scenario or in that memory, in that lifetime experience is, is 100% part of our unconscious states. And many lifetimes that we are living, uh, you know, uh, simultaneously, we still have these subconscious programs of helplessness and we're making agreements. Every single action that you do, every intention, every word that you are putting into the creation is an agreement that you're making with something or someone. You have to understand that. And that requires a lot of responsibility. Because that means you have to be very mindful of your whole self, you know. Um, so discernment now becomes the refinement of an existence, of a co-creation, rather than just being like a, a baby, you know, that just kind of uh, flops around unconsciously without understanding the, uh, you know, the side effects, the consequences of, of their movements. Um, and so this is the spiritual maturity that we're coming into right now as a collective human race, um, as the vibrational frequency of the collective planet is moving into a higher octave, uh, all humans are having to see um, the, you know, the results of their actions, the consequences of their actions. And this is for the refinement of collective unity consciousness, which requires you to uh, you know, unconditional love requires you to understand that um, your actions are not just service to self, but what you do is something that is for the collective, not just yourself. That's how powerful your choices have to be, whether it's the clothes that you're buying, you know, cosmetics that you're wearing, uh, you know, groups that you're participating, everything, everything is going to come to the point where we're going to have to make choices that are severe to form a new world. That's where we're headed right now.
Okay, beautiful. I So I want to go back to go forward. You had talked about DNA and how much we all share DNA cosmically. I love this subject. I think it's so fascinating, this idea of us being family. There's no them and us. There is no separation. Can you explain your understanding of I know it's a big subject, but to the best of your ability, with the time we have, can you explain to us about the DNA, about the out there, if you will, DNA, the us DNA, and how it all became more of a soup? Yeah. Um, well, think of it this way. Um, the nature of this entire universe is all based on fractals. So the way that the architecture of this universe is, is created is fractals. What is a fractal? It's a self-similar copy of the whole, right? Um, so you are a fractal of this, of source. You are a fractal of source. What is source? Source is infinite potential. So the database of DNA that we have in order to create this little organism from your DNA, only 2% of that DNA writes this organism. The rest of that is what we consider up until more recently junk DNA. Now we're beginning to understand um, science and biology is catching up to what we have already intuited and connected with for centuries by looking at the multidimensional body. And what is the multidimensional body? The multidimensional body, the energetic field that emanates from the core of this center is what we now understand as the morphogenetic field. The morphogenetic field is the instruction manual that brings into form this organism. It's within that instruction manual that is defined the beginning and ending of where this finger is going to start growing, stop growing, okay? That there are certain formulas to this body. So, in that same way, um, there are interconnected systems of memory that are both um, holographic and also, you know, in this biology of the body. But you can only access the holographic system through the body. So you always have to integrate into the physical to be able to access that memory, which is proven through healing work that, you know, all schools have kind of touched in some way or another. Um, but essentially what it means to come into heightened state of consciousness is essentially to recover memory. We are recovering the memory of ourselves and the memory, as you asked before, how do we discern right and wrong? Well, there is no right and wrong. There is no black and white. There, are, there is duality, but we, but all of it exists. So we have to learn how to perceive from the zero point which is a place of non-judgment, all aspects of this existence. And that is what we are learning to uncover um, by observing this genetic code in its, in its wholeness. And when we do that, we begin to see our ancestors. When we begin to go into hypnotic regression, for example, I'm a clinical hypnotherapist, so I work with contactees and, and you know all kinds of people from around the world, taking them to past lives, uh, taking them to... Uh, memories, and you uncover entire universes of information for this person. And when that happens, the frequency of the person completely changes. It takes them into a higher octave. And in hypnotherapy, when you begin to take them into their higher self, um, there is an activation that occurs. What is activation? It simply means that your perception is expanding psychologically, bioelectrically, the charge of your body is growing. Um, and metaphysically, you are becoming aware of yourself as the universe. You know, So these are kind of the stages of, of I guess, spiritual maturity that the human is, is expanding in their awareness of what they are. Um, we have uh, the information of uh, many different species in our DNA and um, what, what I found out by interviewing many of these families is that, you know, grandmother, great grandmother, they have all had dreams of, let's say, the blue beings. And so that blue being species, whatever name it might take on, um, has a frequency. And that frequency is encoded contractual agreements of experience for this lineage that the opportunity for them to overcome is the ascension of all of those souls, 
Okay, and those souls agree to ascend through the experience of these lineages. Um, so it's really beautiful. But um, when we clear that out, now they're having experiences with other beings. And then we keep going and we keep going. And, and this is how the, the human discovers, wow, I am all and nothing simultaneously. Okay, so I am this, this essence that is projecting all of these things. And, and the universe is really experiencing through each and every one of us. That's really what it comes down to. Mm. Do you f believe that we are going to have here on earth, open, undeniable first contact with extraterrestrial races? If so, do you have any sense when that might be? And why is it you think that? Well, you know, to be honest, I feel we already are having that. We've been having it. And, um, you know, it's only matrix programming and social engineering that has pushed us into this idea that there is nothing outside of you, that, you know, uh, in, in that, in that uh, we are isolated uh, species, you know, because, and, and that's a very real thing. I mean, um, it was socially engineered through the government, uh, you know, CIA and FBI, to put input these ideas into uh, the entertainment industry to create these fearful ideas of, of um, non-physical forms of any kind or phenomena. So this is something that the human has to wake up from that is not real at all. What is real is that there, we exist in a multidimensional existence. We are constantly surrounded by entities and beings all around us. And it is important for us to cultivate the vision to see that. So um, if you want to talk about the government, I mean, just it's simply looking at the congressional hearings over the past two years have been mind blowing. I mean, if you really read what is being said there, they are claiming biological beings that are existing. Um, there was just a disclosure a couple of days ago. Somebody is confirming that there are biological beings. The government has been interacting with them and it's suppressing the information. There have been pregnancies. There have been activations of psychic abilities that have been recorded. So, I mean, I think, all of it is there. Um, we are the ones that have to disclose, you know, to ourselves and to the rest of each other um, that this is part of the natural existence of humanity. I do believe that because the frequency and the octave of this collective is rising, the veil is thinning to the point where more of us are kind of elevating to a frequency that we can experience collective experiences. I think that that's been heightening. I think that's why there is now a space force that has been put together because of this reason. It is an undeniable truth that is happening by the physics of this realm um, and that we will be experiencing pretty, pretty soon, I think. Mm. Are you a hybrid? I feel very compelled to ask you that question. <laughs> well, um, yes, I, I do. I do believe that I'm hybrid, but based on on my research and based on my uh, what I've uh, seen with hundreds of these uh, contactees, if you look back at our genetic history, we ourselves are a hybridized race, and we can look back at. Uh, the Book of Enoch, uh, Nagamati text, we can look at the Emerald Tablets, we can look at all of these ancient scriptures and, um, you know, artwork and, and, and uh, history that's been recorded about the combination of humans and the gods or the star beings, the star people. Um, we are deeply genetically interlaced with them since the origin of time. Um, so we are a hybridized race. I, I do believe that. Okay, beautiful. And you talked... Uh, just a minute ago about the government and disclosure and that they're also, they've seen examples where psychic abilities were turned on. You had something like that fully conscious interdimensional contact experience that resulted in the activation of your psychic abilities. So can you describe what opened your abilities and what it is you now have to work with? Yeah. Um, so when I was taken on board the craft in 2013, I was taken out of my bedroom through the wall. I literally felt myself dissolve and come back together again on top of the roof of my garage and then directed by six grays into this incredibly beautiful technology of a uh, 
a lenticular type craft of, of light. Um, and the craft was absolutely conscious. It would respond to me and I could psychically connect to it. It was the most unbelievable experience. But when you enter and onboard the craft, I was shown a lot of information. I was shown an alien language and the way that we communicate telepathically. So just so just looking at these different things that happened to me. Um, then I was introduced to my hybrid children. Um, then I was taken to the Pleiades. There was a completely different dimension, time, space. It does not exist in this movement. Um, you know, and, and then I was shown what is the matrix. I was shown uh, the atoms at the molecular level uh, and the nature of the holographic system that we exist in. And all of these things combined were a major activation um, that took me uh, into another, you know, basically dimensional existence of my body. When I was when I uh, was taken into a nebula, I was taken into the Rainbow Nebula, the Orion Nebula, and as I'm there in the Orion Nebula, it, I felt the most incredible peace I've ever felt in my entire life. Um, and then, next thing I know, I'm at the end of my bed, upside down, hanging off the side of my bed, my body is hurting me. It's just like, feels like I just got hit by a truck. I slump down on the floor. I have burn marks over here on my cheeks, um, you know, and my feet are dirty, you know, as if I had gone out um, and walked barefoot for a long time because they're very dirty. Um, and at that moment, I didn't know what to do. I wanted to call the hospital. I wanted to call the police to get help because I just wasn't processing what was happening to me. Um, and I, I went to sleep because I couldn't do anything until 24 hours. And the next day, when I went to work um, on Monday to teach meditation in my office, um, when I entered in and saw my client there, all I saw was a giant ball of light. And I said, oh my God, it's happening again. But it was it was a human. It was this person that I was supposed to be working with. And I would see different colors and I would feel her feelings, her emotions, her thoughts, absolutely transparent. And it hurt because she was going through major anxiety and I could all of a sudden feel that anxiety. And I was like, I don't feel anxious. I don't know why I'm feeling this, you know? So my empathic abilities completely heightened. My vision completely opened up my sense sensory body my taste was heightened my smell my ears i could hear four houses down from my house i could hear the baby crying in the room i mean it was quite maddening for a couple of days because i wasn't ready for that much information so quickly um, and it took me three months to be able to calibrate myself, to learn how to work with my energetic body in order to go grocery shopping, you know, because I couldn't even leave my house. Um, so, yeah, it was a very powerful experience. And it really took years because um, thankfully I have I had been meditating, um, you know, when this experience happened, I went into a retreat for four months and that's when this experience happened to me. Wow. So I had been training myself and teaching myself DNA deprogramming right before that. Um, and if it wasn't for that spiritual foundation that I cultivated, I think that, you know, it would have been just crazy. And also if I hadn't had those psychic abilities, I myself, I don't know if I would have believed what happened to me because it was just, you know, it was so unbelievable. I didn't even believe in aliens, let's say, or these gray beings up until that point. Mm. So it's a major paradigm shift for me, you know. Did you find out what the burn marks were? Well, you know, I've I've researched other accounts and it, there have been a couple cases in which this has happened that people say that because of the energy of the craft, you get sun, you get burn marks here. Um, and I did find it interesting. I mean, the amount, the vibration that you feel when you're in the presence of these crafts is like you're standing next to an airplane, you know, just standing there in the airport next to the airplane. That's how powerful it feels, a rumbling sensation. Um, so yeah, I feel that, I feel that because we entered into another dimensional plane, the particles of your body shifted. I mean, in order to go through the wall, in order to enter and to hold the frequency, to be in resonance with the craft, even, um, you know, your body is going through major transformations at that point. And I think that that is the reason for these activations that happen. 
Yeah. And then I know also, I think it was this experience and correct me if I'm wrong, that you also receive these enormous like zip files full of downloads of information, structure of the universe, universal yeah. laws, nature of DNA, human biology, like the soul. That's a lot. So when you say, uh, I can imagine it took you some time to unpack all of that. What was that like for you to to come back dirty, sunburned, all of this stuff, you know, audibly hearing things that you would never have otherwise, and then boof, all this information, like how did you start to map all of that? You know, it was really difficult because it was at a time where on the internet, you would not find a lot of talk about ET contact as you do now. It's incredible how the world has changed over the past 10 years. Back then, I Googled alien babies, aliens, you know, big eye beings, ant like beings. I mean, I didn't even know the words to use to even look it up. You know, um, I found Opus, which I'm part of the director's board now. And I looked to see if there were other sightings in the area, UFO sightings. There were a sighting that exact evening. Uh, you know, because I thought, how could it be that someone else doesn't see this magnificent light in my neighborhood? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and yeah, so um, it took me some time to integrate. Um, I was actually even afraid to Google it because, you know, it's so paradigm shifting that, you know, you, you kind of want to watch yourself and be like, are you taking this the right way? Um, and then I found... Um, the support group um, here in the Bay Area. Um, and when I went to the support group for the first time, I heard other people talk about it. And I was like, oh my God, okay, I'm not crazy. Like other people are having these experiences and the level of synchronicities with those kinds of experiences. Mm -hmm. um, even people that recognized me from craft were at the support group, which was just mind blowing. Like I saw them and I was like, I know that person. Um, you know, everyone was familiar. That's the funny thing. Um, so, you know, the question was, are we going through some kind of collective psychosis, you mm -hmm. know, or, you know, these are things that are happening. And the more I dove into the work and it took me many years to leave my old career to dedicate mm. myself to this. I was living a double life for some time because, you know, I, my family would be like, don't talk about this. People will think you're nuts. Um, you know, your career will be over, but it came to a point where I just knew that this was important and more women that were going through these pregnancies were coming up. And I looked at my history and my miscarriages and pregnancies when I wasn't partnered um, you know, after, for example, my partner died, my partner passed away in 2008, three months later, I'm pregnant. Um, I thought it was just, you know, the pain and suffering that made me imagine the child. And then all of a sudden, a white light comes and the child is, is gone. Um, so, you know, these kinds of very rare experiences um, that impact your life, they're impacting many people. So, um, we have to understand that the, the nature of being interdimensional means that you have to uh, you have to be ready for things that are in this level of phenomena. And um, a spiritual foundation is number one. You understand the laws of the universe. It will make the journey of uncovering these incredible things that are happening to humanity in a more compassionate, loving way. And I, I think that was something that helped me a lot in, in integrating these things. Well, I don't know how somebody gives birth and this is tongue in cheek, gives birth to 24 children and looks like you do. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty amazing right there. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I also understand these are when it's a uh, galactic in pregnancies, these are not full term experience. It's a, it's a whole different thing yeah. than what we experience here in 3d. Yeah. And I was thinking Geraldine, I'm um, in the beginning when you, and I wrote this down, you were saying atoms and matrix. So mm -hmm. you were saying that you were shown this and I thought, oh, so you were shown creation. Mm, yeah, yeah. Isn't that what really essentially you're talking about? Yeah. yeah. The essence of creation. That's right, that's right. And um, you know, what's interesting is that, you know, 
when I downloaded this information, I never, I didn't have a reference because I, I hadn't researched these things, uh, you know, prior to that. And in 2017, I had a hypnotherapy where I began to download all this information. And these hypnotherapies are completely public. You can go watch them and listen to them. Where? Beginning to end. Yeah, they're actually on my website. Um, a hypnotherapist named Alba Weinman. Mm -hmm. uh, you can look up the video, Alba Weinman 133 and 178. 178 or 176. Sorry, I can't remember the name. Um, but I'm basically in that moment looking at a map of the world, looking at the evolution of genetic modification from the first species into our human race. And I watched the whole thing as a movie. And then later after that session, when I began to research this, I mean, it was just unbelievable. I said the word Nephilim for the first time in my life. I said the word Anunnaki for the first time in my life. Wow. I went back to research these things and they were real words, the real names, yes. references to real things, um, you know, and the storylines behind them, you know, were something that many humans, I, I looked up Gorjeff's work. Gurdjieff had the same map of the body and he had the same understanding of our genetic modification. You know, it's just, it's mind blowing. Um, Blavatsky had talked about it. I mean, you go back to all of these ancient scriptures, it was clearly written there. So, you know, what, what I, what I discover is that, you know, when we activate our higher faculties, we are plugging in to an information network, which is what we know as the Akashic records, which is essentially the database of information that is within the morphogenetic field of this collective human race. So we are all tapping into that and we get the information of the architecture. So if you understand how to read that information, you can learn how to tap into creation. So there, there are certain laws that, that we kind of abide by. Okay. And I, I called it creation, Adam's matrix, but it's also manifestation and pure manifestation. Yeah. I think that's so exciting because, you know, yeah. people hunger for this, you mm -hmm. know, how do I manifest yes. what I most desire? So when you came back amongst many things, I'm aware amongst many things, but now you've got this unbelievable information. Were you then able and still able to create at a massive level and mm -hmm. when you have your heart set on something it becomes a reality for you because now of what this information you have yeah absolutely what i discovered is that my manifestations didn't come from desire as opposed to other times of being in survival the way that we manifest sometimes we desire things we want things we you know we we think of things um so my perspective began to shift into um manifestation being a state of being and and really being in a state of harmony and cultivating that zero point in the lack of attachment to things was actually the key to manifesting. That is when I started to experience synchronicities. That's when I began to experience these incredible opportunities that came forth. Um, you know, uh, my life was kind of predestined at that point when I made the choice. And, and I, and I remember the day that I left my job, I said, um, I completely surrender to the universe. Please use me for the highest good. And when I did that, that's when my life completely changed. And I didn't think about money. I didn't think about where I was going to, what I was going to do, how I was going to do it. I just be of service. And so the universe works through you. Um, and this is how, you know, I, I started to, I went back to school. You know, I did, I did all these uh, education training and, and beginning to understand how to pull this knowledge and make it wisdom to be of service. Um, so uh, how do we create? We have a mechanism in the body. We, we have uh, the chakra system. The crown system of our bodies is one of the most powerful systems of our body. The crown is where the non-physical meets the physical. So when this is dormant, you cannot co-create. You cannot manifest. This activates when you begin to train your intuition. So one of the things that I teach is how to go into reading state. We can shrink our first three chakras. And what that allows us to do is to learn how to control any kind of manipulation or unconscious leaking of your life force into the physical matrix. You redirect your life force 
into the reading state. You open your heart, your throat, and your third eye. And when you begin to activate these centers, now you have more of a clearer vision. And you have to work on refining that vision by clearing your energetic space. When you clear your body, the more zero point you cultivate, you begin to cultivate this crown, which is the center of manifestation. And there are two levels, the seventh and the eighth chakra. The seventh is the one that is responsible for um, your relationship with your higher self. Let's say the contractual agreements of creation that you made before you even incarnated. And I will also mention that purpose for humans is what I mentioned at the beginning of this, of this interview all the choices of the ancestors that have brought forth into manifestation your soul into incarnation, all of the patterns that you're breaking, that's your number one invitation for, for a purpose. If you can break those patterns, you're healing an entire lineage, which will allow you to access co-creation to begin with. Because until you break those patterns, you're not really, you're, you're still programmed to come into suffering and survival. Okay, so the clearing of all of that allows you to activate then the eighth chakra. The eighth chakra is your relationship with source. And so this is something that we have to learn how to cultivate our redirection from the material to the non-physical. And you are actually more, just like your genetic data, 2% writes your protein. The rest, you know, that's who you really are. So you are all of that. And that's who you have to see yourself as um, in order to manifest. You project into this reality uh, a refined uh, intention. Intention is very, very important of co-creation. Whoa. Okay. What a gift that was. You know, and it's really interesting when you mentioned the seventh and the eighth chakra. Um, so I, I'm on the shamanic path. I'm a shamanic practitioner, Munaiki rights practitioner. And one of the things we do, first we open sacred space before we do anything else when we work with a person or a group. And then the second thing we do is called opening Wiracocha. Wiracocha, I mean, yeah. it's God, right? And that's here in the eighth chakra, which we open up to ourselves. And then I would open up over you before I would work with you. And so, yeah, this is so exciting to hear you talk about this same thing, but in different terms. Yeah, yeah, isn't that beautiful? So there is an architecture and, and so many different schools pick up on it. They can talk about it differently, but the architecture is there. And I also do healing, same, same as you, so yeah. Mm. Okay, so you talked about the fact that uh, you had a place to go, right? You, amidst all of this insanity, really, that you came back to with all of this, it really was beautiful, but took a while to get to have peace and understanding with it. And there was a group for you to go to. Mm -hmm. And so now you run the support group, Geraldine, for experimenters, for contactees of identification phenomena. And without sharing any names, can you offer an anonymous example of the wildest contactee story that you have heard somebody share that someone has been through? Oh, my goodness. So many. Um, um, in 2017, I was part of a documentary called Extraordinary Deceiving. And in that documentary, um, there was a story of, of a lady, uh, her name was uh, April. She's in the film, you can watch the film. Um, but in her experience, you know, she had these uh, hybrid experiences and she was having trouble getting pregnant. And it wasn't until she had this experience with the being that she then became pregnant. And then she had the child and the child is the most incredible, phenomenal star child you will ever see. I mean, he's, He's incredible. The artwork that the child does, the visions, the intuitions, he remembers past lives. It's just so, so these are the kind of children that are being born. That's one example. Another example, um, you know, ab ab abductions within families, or I, I don't like to call them abductions. I don't believe they're abductions at all. Um, I think they're interdimensional experiences. Um, but uh, repetitive uh, experiences that happen in a family. 
Why? Because all of them play a role in the seeding of life of this race that they're all creating together. And every single one of the family members doesn't talk about the experience to each other until one day we do a hypnotherapy for one of them. And then he mentions, you know, the grandmother, everybody else did it. So we were able to set up um, that we do separate sessions for each individual without them talking. And as they begin to uncover these stories in their hypnotherapy, uh, they are, it's almost as if they went to this different planet and they describe the planet exactly the same way. They describe the location where they were interacting with these beings, the events that they were doing exactly the same. It was mind blowing. So really what we are seeing in this example is that we do travel interdimensionally. And, and indeed this is happening in dream time. We are leaving the body, you know, and our essence goes into these dimensions in which we are proactively living out these simultaneous lives. So, but what directs these lives and the choices that we make is the frequency of our ancestral lineage. We're working together and we're working together with these species. It is a co-creative process. This human race and the experience on the planet earth is like an organism that is in a state of constant creation. And we create, we create life on other uh, systems. Um, and it's, it's the, it's the uh, survival, you can say, of this, you know, matrix. It's, mm -hmm. it's, that's what's happening. Um, yeah, so that was a really powerful experience that really actually catapulted my research into interviewing other families of contactees. And I'm finding similar things. I mean, it's, it's unreal. It's just it goes in the family. Yeah, it's very interesting. Um, those are great stories. And the first one you told um, this woman and the child and what the child knows, like what a spectacular creature this star mm -hmm. child is. I just posted something on my Instagram page and folks can go there. It's under my name, Debbie Dashinger, and watch this little film. It's obviously a real shot on somebody's iPhone, smartphone. And there's, they're sitting in a car. It's this mother who just asks her very young son, like, you know, where are you from? And he starts saying, well, I'm not from here. And none of us are really from here. And he starts absolutely referencing the galaxy, other races, where we're all from, with this huge smile on his face, full mm -hmm. of joy as this child. And he's saying the most rainbow profound things. <laughs> it just... Yeah. gives me so much hope to see beings like that being born into this world who we are going to bequeath this experience, this planet to, Yeah, that it's in such good hands, such aware hands. So way more progressive, certainly, than my people, you know, in my age and most people. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is quite beautiful to mm -hmm. see what everybody is coming in with and what the potential is. Yeah. And I, I think it's a product of our collective healing. I mean, you and I, all of these beautiful listeners that work so hard on doing their shadow work and their healing, you guys change the frequency of the collective, which allows the souls that come in to be at higher octaves, you know? So we, we play a major role in all of this. And, um, yeah, it's evolution. Every single thing is evolving and it's a natural uh, aspect of this existence. I'm curious. Uh, we're almost at the end. And I heard uh, somebody who channels extra, an extraterrestrial say this, and I was really surprised. And he was saying the percentage of earth beings who have actually had extraterrestrial contact. And I think I was blown away by the number. It was like something in the 90, 90, 90 plus percentile. I was like, whoa. Also, by the way, that's like a little tangent, but also concurrently, the enormous amount of people part of the hybridization or who have children out there in other mm -hmm. galaxies. Mm -hmm. Just this idea that 
we unknowingly, not consciously have had extraterrestrials because so far for me, yeah, as far as I am aware, my um, extraterrestrial contact has been in dream state. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But to even consider that other things could have happened that I just don't remember, I'd yeah. love to. Yeah. What is your knowing of this? Yes. Well, I uh, just like me, for example, I didn't realize that I was having interdimensional contact because as a child, because I mean, at five years old, there was this white light coming in and then I had missing time. But, you know, you don't know that what you're experiencing, your parents don't know, nobody knows. You just have this vivid memory that you cannot erase your entire life of that white light. Um, and it isn't until later that you begin to uncover this information and also listen to other people that have those same kinds of experiences that you begin to see the parallels. That's why these support groups are very healing for a lot of people when you, when, when you see these things. But to recover the memories, they, they say that all the great masters in this, in this uh, realm, the ones that were able to recover their memories of this lifetime and then in the womb and then all of their other past lives, and I've, I've experienced that. I, I went through that process myself, that you actually, through healing, through DNA reprogramming, through shadow work, you begin to uncover memories of yourself in the womb, in the crib, and it opens up a different perspective of yourself. And it usually removes you out of states of suffering and helplessness. You begin to uncover that the parallel lives that you're having are all mirrors of the suffering that you're having in this current life. And you can heal that. You can alchemize that. You begin to uncover these interdimensional interactions that you're having, the agreements that you have with these beings. You uncover that and you heal from that. Um, so, yeah. So the activation of DNA is essentially the process of recovering your memory, the, active, the process of becoming whole is to remember yourself as the source, you know, to see yourself as this all. That's, that's, that's really what it's about. And folks who don't identify as an extraterrestrial contactee work with you, because this work you're doing is phenomenal. Thank you. Um, yeah, so definitely. I mean, a lot, I, it, we don't even need to talk about that topic because you see, ET contact at this point, in my opinion, is a very natural thing. We all have, have had it. We just don't know that we've had it. And it's not ETs. It's interdimensional beings. We are surrounded by entities all the time. It's just you just need to shift your frequency to see it. Simple as that. Um, so the most important thing is that the human is working on learning what love is learning to embody the zero point from which real love emerges. This is the most important thing. Everything else can become a distraction. And it's important that we don't get entangled in the illusions because it's very easy to turn some of these things into fantasies and to get entangled and identified. Uh, we, we think of Arturian, oh, that's it. We just become Arturian. We're nothing else. No, that's kind of a killing of your evolution. So you have to understand that you are all in everything, but you're also nothing because this is just a temporary form that we take on for the experience in a three-dimensional plane. You have to keep moving, keep evolving. Um, it's important to do that because it's the most compassionate thing to do for yourself. At the time of death, as you train yourself to raise your frequency to the highest point of implosion in order to leave the body into a higher octave of existence. This is something that all the ancient cultures and civilizations have been training since the beginning of time. We need to train that the body of moving in and out of the body elegantly in a compassionate and loving way. Um, so this is, this is kind of what my main focus is more than ET uh, focus. It's this focus. It's how you navigate interdimensionally in a compassionate, loving way. So anyone that is doing work, anyone that's stuck in your life, feeling suffering, lonely, you know, this is the starting point to this entire healing uh, opportunity. 
Wow. Where can people find you? Tell us where yeah. we can find them. Uh, yes, you can find me at Geraldine Orozco. If you'd like to get a hypnotherapy or a DNA reprogramming, GeraldineOrozco.com. I also have a lot of free content on my YouTube channel at Geraldine Orozco. Um, and uh, if you're an experiencer, my support group is free at uh, HybridMother.com. And thank you so much for having me, Debbie. It's been an honor. Oh, it's such a pleasure. And right here at the end, Geraldine, this is Dare to Dream. What are you next, Dare to Dream? What are your future dreams, your future goals? Or yeah. interdimensional dreams and goals? <laughs> um, yeah, to to love deeper, number one. This is my, my existing goal forever. And of course, um, to be able to hold space uh, for uh, sharing this information as best as I can. In, in wider ranges, I think we need to expand some of this information. Um, so yeah, just happy to be of service in any way. And that's all. There's, there's not really much else. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. Amazing. Thank you. So folks, you can find her at GeraldineOrozco.com. Also, you can join me aboard the Galactic Origin Celebrity Cruise Workshop Seven Day Adventure. Go to a Galactic originscruise.com. And I end today's show with this quote from Chief Seattle. All things share the same breath, the beast, the tree, the man, the air shares its spirit with all the life it supports. Subscribe to this number one transformation conversation, Dare to Dream with Debbie Dashinger. Remember to comment, share, like, Thank you so much for that. And next week on the show will be Nan Akasha, a seven-time best-selling author, hypnotherapist, and doctor of homeopathy. Akasha has studied with shamans, healers, and masters around the globe. Nan Akasha has been featured in Fast Company Magazine, awarded the Women in E-Commerce Award, and featured on hundreds of radio shows and on live stages. Thank you so much for joining us today on Dare to Dream. And I think the big takeaway, of course, is the love, doing the inner work, the shadow work, so you can accelerate all of humanity and help heal the earth and get us ready to become part of the galactic community. Thanks for joining us on Dare to Dream. <laughs>